Welcome to the Millsnark Mike channel. In last week's video, I talked about my five least favorite and five, what I believe, worst rifles of World War I. And this week, I'm going to talk about the upper tier rifles of World War I. Now, I'm going by my experience with my rifles, so I don't have access to something like a Serbian Mauser or some of the things that a CN Arsenal and Forgotten Weapons has access to. So, but I still hit most of the major powers from World War One. so I think I still have a pretty good base to make a list from. So anyway, uh, some of my criteria were the action and the smoothness of the action, uh, the feed system uh, and the quality of the clips that go into them, the ammo, uh, whether the caliber and whether it's rimmed or not, and of course uh, rifle length. Now you're going to notice that there's a difference between the rifles on last week's video and this week's video. Uh, most of the rifles on last week's video were infantry rifle length, so they were really long, you know, 18th century style rifles. Uh, a lot of, some countries, and by the end of World War I, all the countries figured out that it's preferable to have a shorter rifle. So that's going to be accounted in these rankings. So uh, let's first off, let's talk about number five of my rifles that I like for World War I. The Carcano Moschetto Modelo 1891TS. Now this is the 8924, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same one as the uh, Special Troops rifle of World War One. Now the Special Troop, this video was dropped on 11-1-2020, so if you want to learn more about this rifle, uh, please check out that video. Again, I put I put a lot of time into some of these videos, so if you haven't seen it and it gets buried in YouTube's algorithms. Please check them out. So this is basically a carbine length rifle of the uh, infantry rifle. And this was given to special troops are basically, they're more like special forces troops. It's basically troops who weren't infantry or cavalry. So cavalry, sorry pronunciation please. But um, so this is like, you know, drivers, artillerymen, you know, stuff like that. This has all the advantages, all the good things I talked about of the Carcano rifle, but a shorter length and you know just a lot easier to carry around. Um, plus, this had the 6.5 millimeter cartridge, so not only is it a short length, it isn't going to beat you up like a uh, carbine length version of some of these you know more full power rifles. So it actually still has mild car mild recoil even in carbine form. Uh, Again, bad. I still don't like the Mon liquor style and I still don't like the cheap clips. And as I said with the M91, it's not the best rifle, but it's also not bad. Again, Italy adopted what they could afford to make, so kudos to them. So that's my number five best rifle. My number four best rifle, my number four best rifle and the fact that it's actually not higher may be controversial to some, but my number four is the Gewehr 98. This really needs no introduction. Um, you know, the Mauser rifle, the action used the world over. It's used on even most, uh, most commercial rifles today. You know, this is the standard when it comes to both action rifles. The reason this isn't higher is the infantry length, of course. Plus this, uh, you know, roller coaster sight. That's a little odd. But uh, you know, it's very versatile. I love the fact that it's stripper clip fed. That's another thing Mauser came up with. Uh, stripper clip fed may not be as fast as Monlicker style, but I still think it's less likely to screw up. You know, it's covered. It's less likely to screw up. You feed the clip, uh, push the bullets down, push the bolt in, it knocks the clip out, and you're ready to go. I'd much rather have stripper clip fed over uh, over charger or over uh, well over charger fed or monlicker style fed. So again, the infantry length is really the biggest reason that this isn't ranked higher. And my video on this, and I'm going to say a caveat on that. The video on this I made was October 24th, 2016. This was kind of this was made kind of before I hit my normal format for my history videos, and I will make another video on this in the future. As I said in the other video, I'm going to do a German history, make a bunch of German videos here pretty soon. 
So this will be on that. But if you want to hear some history from me, October 24th, 2016. So... My number three rifle, which would be controversial because for many people this is the number one rifle, for me it's number three, is the short magazine Lee Enfield Mark III Star. My video on this was dropped on October 26, 2018. Please watch that. I'm pretty sure that one was demonetized, so it definitely does not show up in YouTube algorithms. Um, like I said, I put a lot of time into researching these, so... Uh, Please check it out if you want some more history. Uh, number The good on this, it's durable. Charger fed, which to me isn't as good as stripper clip fed, but still it's fast. The famously smooth action. Uh, of course, you know, everybody's heard about the Mad Minute with these. Uh, the 10 round initial capacity. But one thing that was an early complaint was the magazine hanging down, unprotected magazine hanging down. Did They did worry about that being damaged so you know uh, and of course one thing that and the one reason I put this over the Gewehr 98 even though I probably like the 98 action better is that it is short the short you know magazine Lee Enfield it's not infantry length so this is a lot handier rifle actually to take into battle it's well balanced you know fun to shoot and you know, a lot of people swore by it. The only bad thing about this is the 303 cartridge. It's a rimmed cartridge. And that's really the only downside to this rifle with me. And that's one of the reasons I won't take it higher. is because of the 303 rimmed cartridge. Now, an honorable mention to go along with this. Because before World War I, they were actually looking to replace the Lee Enfield. And... They were going to make actually more of an intermediate cartridge. Uh, I believe it's 264, 274. But anyway, they started out with the P13. And after World War One started, they the factories in Great Britain were already spooled up to make the Lee Enfield. So they um, tried to get American factories to make these P14s, which came from the P the uh, P13. And of course, a rifle I'm going to talk about later, um, you know, came from this. Uh, the reason this isn't as good as the rifle I'll talk about later, because one, it really didn't get used much in World War I, and it's charger fed as opposed to stripper clip fed. It's 303, which I think is an inferior round to the 30 out 6. So, but it did get used as sniper rifles. There's a bunch of, you know, Britain just kept kicking them back for quality control concerns. So, I will make a video on this at some point in the future. I don't think I made a video on this rifle individually. Uh, this is talked about in my uh, M1917 video, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. So anyway, this is kind of an honorable mention to the uh, Lee Enfield. My number two rifle is probably the least produced rifle that I have, but the Type 44 Arasaka carbine. I do not have a video for this yet. Um, I actually need to probably get some more uh, 6.5 millimeter ammo to uh, shoot this. This has the strong Arasaka action on it. You know, Arasaka action is one of the strongest actions ever made. In fact, I think it is the strongest action made. Um, and the big thing is, is you got a carbine here and another 6.5 millimeter round. And of course, we're getting into intermediate round territory, so I think that's definitely superior over the full powered rounds. It's clip fed and it has an attached bayonet so you don't have to worry about you know you know how the Japanese like their long bayonets with their rifles almost sword like so this attached bayonet was actually uh, you know a big plus on this. So you know this or you know type 38 carbine would also probably be in the same category. I don't have a type 38 carbine so this is kind of my Japanese representative for World War I. So this is number two on the list because, like I said, intermediate cartridge, carbine size. Don't know why the Japanese went to the uh, seven by the uh, the seven millimeter round later on. 
So what is number one? Well, first of all, we're going to do an honorable mention because I'm an American. So yes, that that probably um, probably biases my opinion a little bit here, but they're well-made rifles. So you're going to be like, okay, which one is it? The P-17 or the M-1903? I am going to go with the honorable mention here for the 1903 rifle. So we're going to call this honorable mention. Uh, so yes, I am an American. Um, again, the video I made on this was 4-17-2016. So this is definitely an early Miltzer mic territory, so please don't uh, knock me too hard on the quality of the video. Uh, once I get done, you know, eventually, like I said, I'm going to do a German series, and probably when I get a few more subscribers, I'm going to do an American series finally. And I'm going to do a full-out video on all my American rifles, or videos on my American rifles. But if you need a little bit more from me, uh, 4 17 2016 So this is one of the best the Mauser variants in my in my humble opinion it's stripper clip fed 30-06 I think 30-06 is one of the superior full full power rounds that were made uh, this is easy to carry it's well balanced to shoot uh, the one thing I don't like about it uh, and I put the 1917 over it is the sights. The sights to me are just a lot easier to obtain on the uh, 1917. So if you haven't figured it out yet, my number one rifle, I've said it many times, it's one of my favorite mill serves to shoot and my favorite bolt action rifle, the model 1917, the American Enfield. And the reason it's called the American Enfield, because as I mentioned earlier at the P14, um, you know, American companies were contracted to make the P-14. When the U.S. entered World War I, the Springfield and Rock Island were the only two making the 1903, and all these factories were spooled up to make the P-14 for Great Britain. Well, they decided to just go ahead and change the, <clears throat> change the caliber and for 30-06, and this is what about three-fourths of American soldiers in World War I carried was the 1917. Uh, this is very well balanced to shoot. Stripper clip fed, 30-06, six round capacity. Uh, I love the sights on that. It's To me, the sights are far superior to the ones in the 1903. And again, it's a very smooth action. I actually think this is smoother than the Mauser action. Uh, I made a video on this on the 100th anniversary of America's entry into World War I on April 6, 2017. So please check that out. But again, I'm going to make another video when I do all my Americans. So to me, this is the number one ri infantry rifle of World War One. So, so let me know what you think in the comments. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, engagement really does help me out. Please be aware of where your elected officials and the groups who claim to represent you stand on the Second Amendment. Please join the GOA. Get $5 off your membership in the description. No, I do not get a kickback from that. If you like my content, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Engagement does help me out with my algorithms. Also, please check out my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and who I support on Patreon. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a great day.